Welcome to Local Point, your life, your stories, with your host, David Gale. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Point. I'm your host, David Gale, and joining me today in the VTV6 studio is Tanya Murray from the Uina and Daggett County Children's Justice Center. Thank you for joining us once again, Tanya. Thank you. Um, it's always nice to have you here, but it also is a little bummer for me, too, because <laughs> what you have to talk about is such a serious nature. But it's definitely one of those things that needs to get out to the, the audience. To uh, be, we, just, we need to have conversations like this more often. Yes, absolutely. Which, which of course, is um, coming up in April uh, is... Um, you tell me. <laughs> Child Abuse Awareness Month is in Thank April you. and I'm with the Children's Justice Center where we see kids for um, physical and sexual abuse. Right. So it is in the basin. It is definitely something that we have here and it's you're right. It's one of those topics that we just have to have conversations about. So let's talk about it. Okay. Um, let's just get right to it. Um, as, as a parent or maybe a friend of a parent who has kids, um, what are some of the things that we need to be looking for? Well, mainly, you just need to be watching for different behaviors with your kids, but honestly, the best thing for you to do is keep open communication with them. Have open dialogues, let them know that, you know, it's okay to tell you tough topics and just, com you know, have conversation with them about things that are difficult to talk about. And then if they do come to you and tell you that something's happened to them, the very first thing you do is just believe them. Okay. And then you also need to watch the way that you react to that because sometimes as parents we overreact to things. Kids are used to us overreacting. Yeah. So they're coming to us a little bit nervous about how's mom or dad going to handle this anyway. So we just need to do our very best to thank them for telling you and say, you know, I don't know what we're going to do about this, but I'm going to find out and we're going to talk to somebody who can help us. And then you call and report it to law enforcement or DCFS. Okay. So I'm... Do kids often do that? I mean, is, is that their approach, is to come to a parent and say, here's something that's happened to me? As much as we love to think that we have a perfect communication with our kids, 72% of kids won't tell a parent, but okay. they'll tell a friend. So what do you do, how do you teach your kids, and how do you prepare your kids to receive that kind of information? Because a lot of times it'll be their best friend or someone that they're close to who will tell them that something bad has happened to them and let your kids know that they can come to you and that you will help them help their friend. Okay. And a lot of times, you know, they think, but, but our, our friend doesn't want us to tell. They made me promise not to tell. Sometimes you have to have that conversation with your child. Are you a better friend or are we going to help your, you know, how are you a better friend? Are you a better right. friend by keeping that secret or are you a better friend by helping your friend and helping that stop? So not only having conversations with your kids about the potential for uh, bad things to happen to them, but to be aware of what do they do if their friends tell them right, about exactly. the same thing, making sure that, that communication can come back to the parent. Exactly. And keep an open mind. I know a lot of times we think that we are so protective of our kids and that there's no way anything like that could happen, but you just never know. And so just be open-minded. If a child, if your child comes to you and tells you something happened, don't, don't discount that. Don't okay. think there's no possible way that that could have happened because you just never know. So just keep your mind open and be respectful. Listen to what they have to say. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to think the same thing, that, that it could never happen. Um, l like news things that happen that you go, okay, was it something that happened to somebody they knew or was it a random act? The random acts is what, as, as a parent, that's what scares me, is sending my kids somewhere and having some somebody do something to my child. But is that reality? Is that how it usually happens? No, um, especially with child sexual abuse and physical abuse, it's someone who has access. It's someone who knows them. It's most often a family member, either immediate family member or an extended family member, um, a significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, something like that. So it's usually someone that they know very well and trust. Okay, so having open communication is the way that you get your kid, regardless of who they know. Because I, I worry about that. If it's somebody that they know, are they going to come talk to me about it? Right. And, and to tell them that it's okay to tell on an adult. Because a lot of times kids right. are, maybe they're, they're used to tattling on their friends at school. Right. But they don't realize that if an adult does something that may not be right, that they can tell. So just 
talking to your kids, saying if something happens to you, I don't care who it is or what it is, you can tell me. Um, is the flip side of that is if I'm if I'm being overly paranoid, is there? I mean, I understand that you, you want to believe your kid first, and you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Is there anything to be aware of that maybe a red flag that? what they're saying isn't actually the case? Or do we don't, is that just, you don't touch that until later? Yeah, so as a parent, if your child comes, even if you're red flags and you're not really sure you believe it, that's where we come in. Okay. So we have law enforcement and CPS who are specially and highly trained for that exact thing. So as a parent, just respond supporting your child okay. and let the authorities do their investigation. So let them do all the heavy lifting and all the hard work to find out whether or not this is something that they can prove or disprove. Yeah. And then as a parent, you're able to handle it based on the information that you get from that. So we really don't want you to go out. You don't need to as a parent prove or disprove. Right. And a lot of times um, as parents, we want to be able to handle things within our home. But in reality, that's what the professionals do and we're not ever taught as parents how to handle those things right. and how to really like appropriately investigate and question so just don't just love yeah. your kid support them we're here to help you we're going to figure things out and then let law enforcement and child protective services do what they do best yeah that makes sense okay mm -hmm. uh, we've got to take a quick break uh, stay with us when we come back we'll talk more with tanya uh, from the children's justice center and tell you about an open house that's coming up as well We are the people behind the connection. You may never see us, but you are always on our minds. Because you are the reason we do what we do. Improving the way you connect is the reason we are always working. Why we are always building. Why we are always striving to give you the best. We are the people behind the connection working together to connect your life. Welcome back to Local Point. Uh, before the break, we were discussing April as Child Abuse Awareness Month and talking with Tanya Murray um, from the Children's Justice Center about what you do if your kid, um, if something has happened to them, or maybe it's their friend and you happen to be the adult who finds out. And you've told us that we should definitely uh, get law enforcement involved who will get CJC involved. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say that that's occurred. Um, what happens next? Well, the very first thing is once a parent or someone who has concerns for this child calls and turns this in, then law enforcement and DCFS work together and they make appointments with the family, they make appointments at the CJC, and we all come together at the Children's Justice Center. They'll talk with the parents, they'll talk with the children, and then they'll follow up with, here's our next steps based on you know what the kiddos had to tell us this is where we're gonna go. So from there, we're able to decide what other services do the kids and the family need. Mm -hmm. Do we need to, are we worried about child safety or family safety? Um, do we have some mental health issues that we need to address? Is there trauma symptoms within the kids or the family? So based on each individual family and their needs, we're able to send, you know, to coordinate all of those treatments and those different services for the family. And it's, it really just m moves very slowly or very quickly and smoothly together. Right. So that's your first step is just make that report. Then they end up at the CJC. We're able to provide all those services and then just start that path of, of working through each detail as needed. Yeah. And, you know, having a kid come in from their home and meet with law enforcement, it sounds a little um, law and order, you know. And so, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the Children's Justice Center is like for them. Well, first of all, we have an amazing dog. We have a facility dog, Kona. So they can meet Kona there and she just calms and just makes everybody feel comfortable and yeah. at home. So um, 
but really our facility is built to make people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Our waiting rooms look just like family rooms. So if they're siblings, um, lots of kids, they're able to play with toys. We can work with mom and dad. You know, there's, it's built to be child friendly. It's a center for that. So they go in, they visit with law enforcement or DCFS and it's in a really comfortable setting. Mm -hmm. It's, they talk about what the kids want to talk about. They, they get to know them a little bit. It's not, bright lights and scary like we would think right, it's not a police order. station no no it's a very comfortable setting in fact if um anybody in the community wanted to come and see the justice center i understand you have an open house coming up we do all the centers across the state we're doing this combined same day same time so any area where you have a cjc april 10th from 11 to 1 and 4 to 6. any center across the state they can come in and we really want to be able to have the public come in and take a look at it Usually we're by appointment only, mm -hmm. and so this is our opportunity to open the doors and showcase everything that we do and be able to take the mystery and question and concern out of it yes. and just open it up and let people see what we do. Uh, it, it's such a great asset to have in a community, to have it so close. Uh, it's unfortunate that it has to be used, but grateful to have it there. So mm -hmm. with uh, we got about a minute left. Um, last words for concerned parents out there, um, maybe we happen to be in, in a great environment and our kids are never going to have to worry about it, but still, what can we as a community do? Be aware. Uh, don't pretend that it doesn't happen here. Don't think that it's just a big city problem. So recognize that it is a problem here, that our kids are facing it every single day, and just do as much as you can to support them and be supportive. And get away from the mindset of, uh, you know, well, there's all these myths around sexual abuse, particularly. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, it is not that kiddo's fault. So yes. do anything that you can. There is no excuse yeah. that's justified for that type of behavior on a child. Yep. Just keep that in mind as you hear things through the grapevine that it, you it's can't. It's not the kid's fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Tony thank Marie, you. for joining us. And of course, thank you all for watching Local Point. Stay tuned for this week's community calendar.